There may not be any rules when you're doing the dance of life, but it's a useful guideline that you'll feel good if you look good. Sometimes, through nature or circumstance, we need a helping hand to look our best. And that's when there's a call for Dr. Ridwan Mia. Fame isn't something that Ridwan Mia has sought, but his role at the cutting edge of reconstructive surgery, especially with burn victims, has placed him in the international spotlight. Burn victims often face a future of psychological and physical trauma. It's this outlook that specialists like Dr. Ridwan Mia strive to change. Today, we're going to chat to him to find out how he does it and what motivates him. Ridwan can already look back on an illustrious career which began in 1999. In 2012, he performed the first cloned skin grafting procedure in Africa on little Pippi Kruger, making him a household name overnight. When Dr. Ridwan Mir does his rounds, his patients have his full attention, so I wouldn't even attempt to chat to him there. So I arranged to meet him at his practice for an informal consultation. Come in. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Ridwan. Oh, nice to meet you. You too, you Thanks too. For Come have a seat. Thank you. So let's just get straight into it. Where does the Ridwan Mia story start? I used to watch my uncle in the town of Mafeking. He was a GP, a real community doctor, and uh, he had a day clinic over there, and I watched him do a lot of surgical procedures, even as a high school student. I learned a lot from there, but it also gave me uh, an inspiration that said, you know, I could do something that I really enjoy, but at the same time really help as many people as I can. So what then drew you to plastic and reconstructive surgery? I was drawn to general surgery very early on uh, with all the trauma surgery I had practiced at uh, the Chris Hani Baragwanath Hospital and uh, I found that I enjoyed doing finer surgery. And um, I had my first uh, exposure to plastic surgery in the UK where we did a lot of hand surgery, a lot of craniofacial surgery and cleft lips and palates uh, in particular and I think that's what drew me to it. What does becoming a plastic surgeon entail? One needs to have an appreciation of the aesthetics of human beings but also uh, being able to marry science and art. You have to become a doctor you have to uh, then spend time in uh, other surgical disciplines, identifying your strengths. You have to do at least three college exams. You do a master's degree with your university, and then you spend a minimum of four years in the actual discipline itself. So on average, it's about 10 years after you become a doctor that you can become a plastic surgeon. What are some of the most interesting developments in your field at the moment? The field of tissue engineering is a, is a new field in plastic surgery, but in medicine in general, the ability to clone um, various bodily parts. Certainly we've been able to clone skin for burn victims. For example, the clone skin we did on Puppy Kruger, uh, you know, the little girl that won South African's hearts, uh, I think from all walks of life. Uh, really, she was two and a half years old and we managed to clone 80% of her body skin to cover her burn wounds. And that was something quite remarkable for us as a team. Dr. Mia, patient has arrived. Thanks very much. So this little boy, Malemo, is quite a hero. He was really badly burnt a couple of years ago and uh, we had to do many surgeries on him. So his parents are big Mela fans, so they've agreed for you to sit in on the consult as well. Hello. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Are you okay? Are you getting better? Good. How are you? Nice to see you again. Well. Hello. This is Zakia. She's from Mela. Hello. Can I get a high five? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sit, sit over there. And how's he been doing? No, he's been doing very well. We've been seeing the progress on him uh, since he was discharged from hospital and then up until now. We were worried about uh, the left hand. So yeah, even this one, there was a release here. Yes, yeah, no, it's, it's much better. Yeah, it's much so better. there's a lo whole lot of movement there. So the plan with the surgery is to open that up. We're going to put, we may have to put a little skin graft in there and, 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 and allow those fingers freedom of movement. So that's a boy, getting better. Malemo, do you like your doctor? Yes, he's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you guys connect with Dr. Mia? Actually, when we got there by the hospital, they recommended him. They said he's the best one. As you can also see from my son, you know, uh, from how he was looking when he was admitted at hospital, and up until now. Can you have a sweet? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let's say goodbye then. Thank you, doctor. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank Keep you. well, and then we'll see you on the surgery day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Give you a hug before the op. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. He is an absolute hero. He is, and he's a very good kid. 
Your work is obviously very, very emotional. How do you move past this and forget about that and unwind? I think it's just finding things to distract me, uh, whether it be reading a book in the park, uh, going running. Uh, I love running in the area where I live, um, cycling. And another thing is my home, which is really my sanctuary, and I love inviting friends over for tea. Um, and Mela is more than welcome to join me for a cup of tea. That would be lovely. I'm going to steal a sweetie. Two. Okay. <laughs> Catch casualty casually and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Thank so, you. please, you're yeah, very welcome. This, this is not the usual bachelor pad. Well, I try to keep my style going. I'm very, very impressed. <laughs> and let's get some tea. So, Zakia, how would you like your tea? Just would you like coffee? Black. Just, Just black tea. Black that would tea. be perfect. Ridwan, a lot of your spare time is spent with the Smile Foundation. Can you give us some background on the organization, its aims and objectives and the activities it does? The Smile Foundation for me appealed on many levels because obviously it was about surgery, which is my passion. And at the same time, it raised money from the corporate sector, so that was the charity part of it. And it gave kids in need specialized surgery. So it married for me all the things that I'm interested in. It's business, it's charity and it's surgery. So I know that you walked for the Smile Foundation's fashion show. Tell me about your personal style. Well, I think it's really something that's evolved over time. Basically just observing people in my own profession and people uh, in my family. You're also on the panel of judges for the Miss India South Africa pageant. Would you say that you have an eye for beauty and what do you look for in contestants? Oh, I'd like to think I have an eye for beauty. I think uh, being a plastic surgeon, I, you know, obviously trained in, in uh, what we call facial cephalometrics. So uh, being able to recognize attractive and non-attractive features and what works in different people. So obviously with regard to judging a contest like Miss India where it was finding somebody with uh, strong features, somebody who was able to um, carry off style but at the same time match it with their personalities, um, I think I was able to lend some, some help in that regard. Rivran, would you call yourself a perfectionist? I don't think quite as yet. I'd like to think in the future that that would be something I'd be able to call myself, but I think there's still a long way to go. Speaking about perfection, when I walked in, I saw some of your awards on display. They're mostly uh, recognition awards uh, for a lot of the work I've done in plastic surgery and reconstructive work. For me, it was uh, you know, just an expression of gratitude uh, and more of my own gratitude. Um, you know, it just, just shows uh, how grateful I am that uh, to be in a profession such as my own, something I'm passionate about, uh, it, it's work that I do and, and I feel like I'm having fun when I'm doing it. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to follow in your footsteps or who wants to go into your field? A country like South Africa is in dire shortage of specialist surgeons, so plastic surgeons are part of that. Um, so I, I would advise young people who are keen uh, to spend a lot of time uh, shadowing uh, people like myself. The idea is to stay focused and uh, not to get uh, misled or get led away from the path. Just keep your eye on the ball and though it takes a while, uh, you know, it's very worth it once you're here. Cheers to that. Thank you. Dr. Ridwan Mir would never claim his work is perfect, but what's most important is that he brings happiness to his patients, and that is more valuable than perfection can ever be. Mm.